Hi guys. I, when I was asked to share the stage with Julia, I actually got really excited. The reason for that is both of us, we live a double life at the moment. Um, we were lucky to be part of the global fashion industry. Um, we're here in this beautiful place today. Um, we you know, came to learn, to get inspired, to explore some challenging ideas with you. But at the same time, literally right now, um, both of my brothers, our families, um, our childhood friends, they don't have electricity, water, heating, internet, or phone connection. The moment two of us are off the stage, we will be checking. Oh, I just wrote. Let's do this easy. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't realize this was happening. The moment both of us are off the stage, we will be checking our messages for any news from home. But please don't fret, we're not here to share our sadness with you. Um, contrary to that, I actually hope two of us will be able to inspire you today. We want to share some um, beautiful acts of resilience and creativity. We want to show how the people of Ukraine are not just surviving, but how they find, find really fun and creative ways to live through this, through complete darkness, right? Um, I also want Julie to share some personal stories of hers and tell how does it feel to work in fashion when our home is on fire. Um, if I'll talk about me personally, um, I weirdly, I don't know if you will believe me, um, never been more grateful and more excited to work in fashion than since the war started. Because when so much is taken away, away from you, you really start um, cherishing what you have. So it would be interesting, Julie, you know, to hear, did anything change for you? How did you see fashion, especially that first week when it was all happening with fashion shows in the background? Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's really challenging here to be a representative of uh, that geopolitical uncertainty global that we witness now. But we really want with our speech now to bring you, not to waste your mood, but the opposite actually to cheer up you to show the example of real resilience that Ukrainians show in these days. Uh, this is the picture, the actual pictures of how Ukraine looks right now, but it's, it was dramatically different when it all started. Uh, the very first week of the, of the war, it was a Milan fashion, fashion week, and of course, we Ukrainians, we didn't think of fashion at all. But then I found myself in a place thinking, the Paris Fashion Week gonna be the next one, and how the fashion industry gonna reflect on the you know, mass murder in the center of Europe. And I decided myself to go there, to, to, to enter that crowd of people, to see, to hear what they think, to, to witness myself, what's the reflection of this industry to these events. It was really, really tough experience, to be honest. But on another hand, what I realized that people really want to help but they don't know how. They really want to do whatever they might do, but they don't know where to place this help. What's the, what's the real help might be there? So that's how actually the idea of better community was born. I realized that I really need to build up a system, a very efficient system of uh, both, let's say, um, fields where the help want to be there and where the creative community in need is there. And from my Vogue years, of course, I'm very close to all the creatives in my country, all the designers in my country, so I know them personally, I know all the needs from them, I was in touch with all of them, so Better Community was created really quickly, and I wish I was, I, I will be here to tell you about my upcycling system that I was building before the war, but it's actually that I converted my team, my company into community to build up a system very quickly. It was built up in two weeks. The whole website, the whole community, the whole system was built up really quickly. Uh, we, my team at Better, we just created a showcase of profiles of uh, creatives that you can just directly reach out. You can hire them, you can commission them, you can do whatever you have, all place of data of contacts. So there was like a preliminary field of help that you could be offer, offering them. Of course, there were other layers like financial support, legal support that we also did for the community people. And here will be one story that I really want to show you. This is the guy. Uh, since I was watching, on, uh, I was uh, um, 
anal analyzing all the emails that will be coming to community, this email precisely made me cry for weeks because this guy, you see on, the, on this photo, you see him in the previous life, he's a photographer. He's very young, he's 20 something. So his email was like, you know, Julie, I lost my father, my mother uh, got cancer and she left to Germany and I don't need money, I don't need any financial support. I just really ask you to help me with press uh, page to be able to do war reportage. And I was so stoned with this email. I was literally, it was the most crazy experience for me. And I asked him, maybe you still need some money. And he's like, just for the films, because I shouldn't film. So he became a war reporter, actually. And he is now working there. And he's very young. And he's a very bright representative of this new generation of Ukrainians. Um, and this is the next slide I want to show you. This is a video of techno community of ravers, a very young people. I will ask to run the next video, please. Um, this is the rave community that created the, um, actually, fund. What they do, they set up raves on the damaged houses and they reconstruct the houses. They fundraise money, they dance, and they rebuild the houses at the same time. So this is a very, very bright example of who Ukrainians are. They're not in despair, you know, they're not depressed. They really do the, you know, this is a real rave, but what, in the results, they actually deconstruct, reconstructed a lot of houses around Kyiv area and in the most damaged area, damaged area. So it's like, that's why we're saying we really want to inspire you that when you have the privilege of normal life, you can do so many things when you don't have any privilege, but you can still do so many things. You can rebuild your country, Can actually. I add that very often you call home and you think that you need to uplift those that are stuck there, right? And weirdly, it works totally the other way around. They're the ones that every time re-energize us. We are the ones worried. We are the ones trying to find support. And then they're there just all the time giving us energy. Because weirdly, when the blackout's happening, they're saying it's romantic when, or they're saying, oh no, it's fine, we moved three group of friends into one house, so it's warmer together. It's yeah. really astonishing because with every day, you wake up and you, six in the morning, new updates of like crazy news. And then, yeah, you make that phone call and it's, yeah, they're calming us down. And that's what I think is energizing us so much at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it's true. And then with the next video, you will see how people arrange in the classic music concerts in the dark to still fundraise money because Ukrainians know very well how much we need. Actually, we stopped calling the world, but inside of the country, we know the needs very well. And I will ask to show the next video. This is the, sorry, this is not the high quality video, but it's still the video shoot on phone. This is how the uh, classic uh, opera looks in Kiev right now. You see, it's this is our just national the opera candles. House. Yeah. So, they do concerts right now during the blackout. It's no heat, it's dark. It's like nothing around, but they do these concerts. They uh, appreciate life. They have fun actually, and they fundraise mon money at the same time. So this is the, the real example, right? And uh, with the next slide, um, with the video, I will ask also to run the video for the next slide. This is the, again, this new generation of Ukrainians. She's the singer and she turned into Volunteer. She is medic. She's war medic now. She's in the hottest spots in uh, in the front lines right now. I didn't put those images that will fright you, but she's actually running through a very hell uh, right now. And she's a very young girl who was like supposed to have her career of a singer actually. So um, this young generation is the Ukrainians. You you should know because they were actually born with the first revolution. They were part of first revolution, the orange revolution. They were part of dignity revolution. And these are Ukrainians that are fighting right now, but they are not victims. They are fighters. They're actually very well determined. They are very self-aware. They know, and we know it's actually our generation because I was also a part of two revolutions. We really know what, what for we are fighting. And with better community, my goal was to actually not uh, bring this victim narrative to ask for money or whatever. It was really important for me to show just how vibrant those, those talents, how cool they are. They just, 
they're just here to work with you, collaborate with you. And they, it's just that we did the easy access to them, like to escape this complicated system to get there, right? And uh, with the next video, it's another example of this generation. This is a DJ's that became a volunteer uh, system. They call themselves Kiev Angels. They really go to houses with old people. They bring food. They help with uh, fundraising. This is like very young kids that stay in Ukraine and they do this revolution, but in the, in a very culture form. Form, you know, they do this DJ sets. They do this uh, concerts that really. Uh, embrace the, the spirit of people there, but at the same time, it has a very precise purpose to help people. And another example that galleries are operating these days, again, with no light, with no heat, with anything. And it's, you know, it's very symbolic to me because with, when you find art, when you find art in darkness, when you take a torch and you really put a light into a piece of art and you do it in the, in the midst of war, in the midst of danger of your life, you still do it. When you seek the beauty of life, when you value this around you, it's, it's really a re-evaluation re of, you know, of what we I, have. I'm sometimes us. jealous of the examples they are showing to us in Ukraine because I feel they're making something really beautiful out of something bad. Because I would have no, not came up with an idea to give everyone a torch to see art in the gallery. But that's actually probably such a beautiful experience. Yeah. So, and we, of course, have to go to fashion. Okay. How the, how so the fashion? Hmm? Press one, so it plays. Yeah, sorry. So fashion also keep operates. It's actually the, carp the Carpedians, they keep working in the dark. Then we have uh, the ceramic uh, studios that also you see they work with generators. So they keep uh, taking the orders, they keep retail, the, they keep uh, the, let's say, normal uh, fashion operations. This is our main retailer. They operate out from bomb shelter. The call center is there. Uh, so they literally sit in the bomb shelter, but st they continue to sell. The, the retail sector is still alive. This is far fetched of Ukraine, guys. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, this is the. the sh sorry. I yeah, but they, they keep delivering the orders. They, yeah, the fact that they have a call center while the bombing is happening, I'm like, who are those people, right? <laughs> yeah, they keep, they keep going. And this is, the, this is our, actually our studio. We do upcycling. Uh, this is when they unstitch the clothes. And this is also, you see, with this, you know, uh, helpless light. But then we, we, we still do this. And uh, right now, but uh, works on a very important mission because it's a winter coming and the temperature in Ukraine is going to drop really low, like minus 20 for some days. And for us, it's really important to help. Um, it's actually important to leap through this winter. And we believe that in spring, it's gonna be, we're going to celebrate victory. It might crazy, sound crazy, but really, re really need to survive this winter, right? So what we do now, we call uh, we reach out all the brands to uh, for them to donate puff coats, and we want to upcycle them into sleeping bags, which are very essential for for people, uh, for soldiers because they literally live in churches. So it's um, it's so many ways, creative ways to win this situation, to not to be depressed, not to be broken, but to the opposite, to actually find a very alternative way of you know operating, but it's actually uh, even more challenging for you. And you know how brain works. When it's challenged, it brings the brilliant ideas. So um, I really want with this, you know, with this old representation of Ukrainian war updates, I really want to inspire you to keep an eye on what's going on, but for, for not from the negative perspective, but actually from a very positive perspective, but uh, because we Ukrainians, we're very sure that in this spring we're going to have a very happy moment of celebration of victory. And I believe this victory is going to happen to all Europe, actually, not to only Ukraine. It's going to happen globally because it's going it's to be a victory of a true democracy over the dictatorship. I'm sorry to bring these political terms here, but it's like it's really not easy to keep it uh, clean from p political terms. But well, with this last video, if it's if I might ask to bring this last video on the screen, 
I really want to inspire you. This is people and the volume have to go up because this is people during the air raids and they just gather in the, in the underground station. This and is a bit less than two weeks ago when all our electric systems were bombed. So everyone using train stations for safety at the moment. But let's um, put the sound you so that sound you can hear what they do. They actually sing together. They sing the anthem. Uh, something happens when the sounds and we don't hear this, unfortunately. But this video will show you also why we're so big on Eurovision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is actually a video. It's sad that we don't hear, but they are singing all together. And this, um, this is a sign of unity that we have actually. And uh, we witnessed this miracle for fashion world. Uh, how they, everyone got united for Ukraine, you know, and I, I call it a miracle how people got really close to a problem, not be afraid of the problem, because I really believe that we cannot really speak about future if we are blind for our present. And our present is like this, we have to witness this. But let's find very creative ways how to, we, how to step into this next beautiful chapter of our life. But guys, I know that many of you um, want to support, but very often you don't know how. Even we very often completely lost and feel helpless, right? So at the moment, I think it's so much about understanding that the world changed in the last months. If there was a moment when the help was needed, it's actually now, because there is a much bigger um, challenge that we're facing. It's not anymore a war, it's a very dark and freezing winter. You're looking at the country that for this winter is predicted to go into minus 20 multiple times. So the warmth is needed, right? But then the other thing that we have power is communication. It's the media not to get tired, not to get more excited about celebrities, right? Make sure that, you know, you create stories, find ways to engage your audience, because I know how media works. Oh, we posted an Instagram post and the likes went down and we can't keep doing this. It's killing our interactions. But we are the creative people, so we need to find how do we communicate to make sure that the message reaches people. Because the whole thing we have now is to carry through the next three, four months. Yeah, the sound is here. <laughs> Thank you guys for your attention. And uh, Olya says a very important thing, just keep being vocal on this. It's not a shame, it's actually a very important thing. And it's brilliant to be a part of this big revolution, global revolution of, you know, of values, true values. Thank you. Thank you.